This is the fastest gaming monitor in the world, the ASUS ROG PG248QP, and it's really good, but it has a one deal breaker that makes it not a good choice for a small select group of gamers. Now, to find out what that deal breaker is, I'm gonna tell you in a bit, but let's start off with the other aspects of this monitor first, starting off with the design. The design of this monitor is really quite nice. I mean, if you're really into the gamer aesthetic. You got an ROG logo on the back that lights up, a stand that is like heavily adjustable with a webcam mount on top. You can even adjust the size of the base of this monitor um, so that you can basically have it be more stable or take up less space on your desk so you have more space for your mouse and your keyboard. Very easy to use many controls on the back and the IO is pretty good with two HDMI ports, a DisplayPort port which you should be using because 540Hz should use DisplayPort as well as a USB Type-B to connect your USB Type-A hub which is Good. So this gaming monitor has all the bells and whistles. I feel like the only issue with the design is that it is quite big and quite chunky, so it takes up a lot of space on your desk. So if you have a very small table, you should probably consider getting a monitor arm that's mounted to the table or mounted to the wall to save space. But you're not watching this review for the monitor's design and features. You care about the monitor's performance. And well, you've probably also watched a billion other reviews at this point talking about how good this monitor is in terms of motion clarity and the lack of motion blur and the smoothness of everything. Are those statements true? Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure you've watched reviews from like Optimum Tech who have absolutely glazed this monitor over and over because, well, it really deserves the glazing. 540 hertz yields absolutely phenomenal. It kind of closes in on that threshold of uncanniness of you can't really tell whether this is a game or reality because it's just so smooth and just so clear. 540 hertz isn't something that you instantly notice when you come from 360 hertz, but within an hour or two of usage, you get used to it and you start to realize how nice it feels. Compared to 360 hertz, you just have an absence of stuttering, you have an absence of noticing the frames being there. And that results in your eyes just getting very used to what you're seeing on screen, which makes you more immersed, which allows you to play better. And things just feel a lot more smooth, a lot more fluid, which is definitely also gonna help with your performance as well as your immersion on top of that. It's a thing where once you get used to it, you can't really go back to 360 hertz and 240 hertz without noticing the difference. So yeah, it might not be as big of a jump going from you know, 120 to 360, but it's something that once you get used to, you kind of don't really want anything lower, which is how I would describe 540 hertz. So if you're asking or wondering whether you can actually notice the difference, the answer is absolutely yes. It's really, really good. But just having 540 hertz isn't enough. The panel itself is really, really fast. It's a TN panel, unfortunately. Uh, you're paying like eight, 900 US dollars for a TN panel in 2024, which is kind of crazy, but it's a TN panel because TN is the fastest LCD panel technology available, which means you're gonna have the fastest pixels response time, which means you're gonna have less latency, you're gonna have less input lag, and you're gonna have a screen that switches faster, which is gonna be better for motion blur. Sure, it's not as fast as OLED, but OLED hasn't reached 540 hertz yet or 480 hertz yet, and it does on some other gaming monitors. And this is also much cheaper than the OLED stuff that kits 480 hertz. So I'm not gonna compare it to OLED. It is definitely more cost effective of a way to get great motion clarity than OLED currently is in its current form and its current like level of development. TN though does mean you have a couple of trade-offs in terms of the viewing experience. So TN tends to look a bit more washed out, there's going to be less contrast, the saturation is also going to be a bit off, and the color accuracy is just going to be plain not there, and the viewing angles of TN are significantly worse than IPS or VA, especially when it comes to the vertical tilt viewing angles. Of course, a Asus has put in a lot of work to kind of try to mitigate and compensate for the issues with TN. This panel, as far as TN panels go, is actually pretty good. Like the color accuracy is all right. It's not gonna be for color grading, but like it's good enough for watching YouTube videos without really being concerned. You can play visually exciting games like Cyberpunk uh, with a lot of great colors and still have a great time. And this display gets pretty bright as well with support for I think HDR 400. So if you're primarily just a gamer and you're not too concerned about color accuracy and color fidelity and these kinds of things, then you're not really gonna have a complaint. It's not so bad. But the thing is, as much as they could have fixed the TN color issues, uh, there was one thing they didn't manage to quite perfect, and that's the issues with TN viewing angles. So the viewing angles of TN panels are generally quite bad. And in terms of the left, right tilt viewing angles, this panel actually performs perfectly fine. So if you have the monitor at the eye level with you and at a reasonable distance from you, it's gonna look perfectly fine. You're not gonna really have issues with viewing angles. However, it does have an issue with vertical 
low viewing angles. When you look down towards the monitor with an angle like this, or you look up, you end up with significant loss of contrast as well as significant color shifts, which definitely are going to be quite noticeable. Now, this isn't going to be a big issue because you're not going to be using a gaming monitor with the screen below your face or above your face like this. But if you sit really close to a gaming monitor and you do the geometry and try to figure it out, you actually realize that the bottom on the top of your screen will be basically at a steep angle to your eyes and they would have significant color shifts, a significant fall off in contrast, and you know, you will have problems seeing things at the bottom and the top of the screen if you sit really close to this monitor because of the angles you'll be looking the screen at. So just think about it, right? If my face is planted towards like this, towards the gaming monitor, which there are a good number of gamers who do this. Uh, face shanks is an example. But like there are a lot of gamers who put their face like this. And for that kind of small but not that small subset group of gamers, yeah, well, this monitor isn't for you. This is the deal breaker that I was talking about. But the thing is most people sit at a somewhat reasonable distance. And so long as you are further than like five centimeters from the screen, you won't have this issue whatsoever. It's just an issue that I faced when I was trying it out gaming like this, hugging the monitor. So yeah, that's the deal breaker. This next thing though is a deal maker and that's NVIDIA's ULMB2 motion blur reduction technology that is in this monitor as well. ULMB2 is absolutely brilliant. It's basically a motion blur reduction technology that turns off the screen in between frames being shown so that the kind of blurry mess intermediate frames when pixels are changing color but not fully changed in color yet are hidden from your eyes. And if your eyes can't see it, your eyes can't register it, so it tricks your brain into thinking the image that's in front of you is super duper clear. It's a motion blur reduction technology called backlight strobing that a lot of people have also implemented in the past. But ULMB2 is software-based, syncs up with your NVIDIA graphics card, it needs to be at least RTX 3000 series, unfortunately. But it works really, really well, and it's absolutely one of the best implementations of backlight strobing so far. Whatever it is though, you should turn it on if you're playing sweaty games because it really significantly improves motion blur by hiding the blurry frames and all you see are clear, sharp, crystal clear frames with sharp crisp lines that are well defined and it results in a much clearer, much smoother gaming experience. A lot of people are concerned with backlight strobing technologies generally that hey, um, when my eyes get tired, won't it cause a lot of eye strain? Well, I did find that to be an issue on lower refresh rate monitors, 120Hz, uh, 240Hz maybe. On this gaming monitor, because it's fine 40 hertz, it just absolutely doesn't have that issue. 500 frames means it's so smooth, you have significantly less eye strain to begin with. And when you have less motion blur on 500 frames, uh, even with the strobing, which you can't really tell because your screen is refreshing 500 times a second, you just end up with an experience that is probably the least eye strain I've ever had on any fast refresh rate gaming monitor I've ever used. So don't worry about eye strain, turn that on, it's absolutely brilliant. It allows you to see your enemies clearer, your images, your gameplay is just going to be smoother and more immersive. As nothing to not like about it. The only problem with ULMB2 though is that it's NVIDIA only and you need an RTX 3000 series graphics card and above, which you probably need for this PC anyway since you need to be running your game at 540 FPS to get the most out of it. Uh, more on that in a bit, but ULMB2 is NVIDIA only. So if you have an AMD graphics card or you don't feel like supporting Jensen Huang's extremely inflated stock price, then you might not be interested in getting this gaming monitor. Because if you're paying so much for a high-end gaming monitor, you definitely want to be able to turn on the motion blur reduction technology that I think makes up for 30 or 40 percent of what makes the experience of this monitor good. Like without ULMB2, I would argue that it's 20 to 30 percent worse in terms of how it feels. So if you get this monitor, make sure you have an NVIDIA graphics card and make sure you turn on ULMB2 because it is a top-notch feature that you cannot, and I promise you, you should not, you want to not start on. That basically sums up my thoughts on the PG248. I didn't talk too much about colors or watching movies on this because really this is a gaming monitor focused at esports tryhard gamers. It's a monitor designed to help you win, designed to give you an edge up in gaming. It's designed for enthusiasts or professionals. It's designed for athletes because it's just throwing everything out of the window if it doesn't help performance, which I think is a very respectable thing to do. And it does really, really well. It's fast, it's smooth, and it's super duper clear. And so long as you're not kissing this monitor, it just performs like a beast. So then <laughs> that leads me to the next question, which is should you get this now or should you wait for those super fast OLED monitors to come out? Since OLED has 0.01 millisecond response time, it's really clear, it's really fast, it doesn't need backlight strobing, it just, it's super excellent for esports gaming. Well, the answer to that is 
yes and maybe no. If you think about it, 480 Hz OLEDs are still a couple of months out and no one knows whether they will actually be good, whether they'll have any launch issues. So to have like realistic implementations that everyone can have, that everyone should actually go out and buy, probably will take quite a number of months before that becomes a reality. On top of that, OLED is going to be significantly more expensive, especially if you're getting cutting edge 480Hz, 500Hz stuff that has been announced at CES. And that actually makes this 540Hz display kind of look a lot more sensible price-wise, even though it's 800 US dollars.